Hello, I'm Kevin Holsgrove, and today I'll be presenting a visual representation of my recently published white paper, Query Writing, a KDB Plus Framework for a Scalable Load Balance System, the latest addition to the KX Lecture Series Q for Gods. Within this paper, I provided a framework designed to be simple but effective at three things, writing queries from users, scaling a system on demand, and maintaining connectivity throughout the system, which we'll explore in this demo. The central hub of our system is the load balancer. Within this queue process, queries are allocated as a service resource on a first come, first serve basis. If a service resource is currently unavailable, the query is added to a queue, uniquely identifying each query by the gateway it arrived on and the user who requested it. A service, in this context, is just another queue process that a user wishes to execute a query or a function on. In most cases, this would be a database, which could be on disk or in memory. However, this can also be some sort of a report server or calculation server. Now, a resource is an identical instance of that service. It could be a set of queue process pointing to the same on-disk database. It could also be a real-time subscriber to a ticker plant. This framework also enforces either asynchronous or deferred synchronous methods of communication between all components, thus preventing any individual process from blocking responsiveness of another. More detail is provided within my white paper. Today's presentation has been created using the viz.js library. WebSockets are connected to a monitor queue process which listens in on all network traffic between individual components. As you can see, at the center of all of this is our load balancer. Now let's add a new service. For the purpose of this demo, I've created four options using examples of massive databases in the world today. Let's take the Center for Climate Change as our first example and add one resource. We see that the connection is open between the load balancer and the resource. Now let's add a gateway. There are a number of reasons why you would create multiple gateways and how you organize them is very important in providing a balanced system for your user base. Let's call this gateway New York. The connection has been established with the load balancer and the gateway is waiting on queries from users. So let's add some users in. We'll add the user to our New York gateway, sending queries to our Center for Climate Change resource. They're small queries every five seconds. As you can see, our client has a connection open with the gateway. Every five seconds, the user sends a query to the gateway. The gateway requests a resource from the load balancer, and since there's nobody else waiting, it gets redirected immediately. Edges between the nodes representing our components are being created dynamically based on the query, represented by an arrow, being sent to each resource and the time taken for each query to complete. Now let's add an additional user, with the same parameters. The frequency of queries between our New York gateway and the given resources increase. The more users we add, the longer this given resource is occupied. Given that the user's interaction with the gateway is using deferred synchronous communication, each user is waiting on a response from the gateway before sending another query. However, if we add six users querying one resource, where each query takes one second to complete, then there are no longer moments where this resource is free. Each user now has to wait a little bit longer for the results to come back. So, let's add another resource for this service to our system. Immediately, the load balancer has sent the next user in the queue to the now available resource. Waiting time has decreased and responsiveness is back to being optimal. How about we add another service to our system? This time, a resource from the Human Genome Project database. We'll add a user to the same New York gateway. However, this time, we'll send a query every second. We'll add a few more users for this service in order to starve the system of available resource. By adding more services to our system now, we immediately accommodate for the load. Let's try increase the complexity of our system by adding another two gateway services, one for London and another for Hong Kong. We'll add a few more users to gateway querying the genome project.
Here we can visually see the load balancer distributing resources evenly to each gateway on request. The same users are still querying the Center for Climate Change database. As the complexity of our system increases, the essential component, our load balancer, is continuing to stay on top of all of these users' queries and distribute them to resources. I'll quickly discuss gateways. In this demo, I've been given gateways names based on regions. However, this doesn't have to be the case. Each gateway is one IPC hop away from the resource, and although a user's query would ideally be designed to reduce the volume of raw data being pulled across, there will be occasions when users will want to produce results based on a combination of services. This could be performed on the gateway level by providing users with functions designed to perform operations on the data before returning the results. This could be time consuming, and if this is the case, the gateway will not be as quick at responding to other users, so you may want to distribute users to particular gateways based on given use cases. The system designed here is intended to be the starting point for building a scalable system that load balances an increasing user base. A fully mature system will include things like query validation to prevent harmful commands being executed on the system, or smart query writing to leverage data cached by the OS within given resources that have previously been given similar queries, or added level of permissioning and authentication or make a gateway allocation process for distributing users evenly to gateways. A number of topics have been explored and will continue to be explored in the Queue for Gods white paper series. To see more, please go to www.firstderivatives.com where you can click on the KX Technology tab, followed by the Queue for Gods lecture series. Regular KX meetups are organized worldwide, so please try to find the time next time to come along. Thank you.